Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and today I'm going to show you how to engrave the leatherette bottle openers that you can get from Johnson Plastics or JDS Industries, uh, things like that, and show you how to get the nice shiny silver results on the black. Let's get into it. The first part of this is going to be the design. So I'm going to jump over to my computer and show you exactly how I designed for this project. And I'm going to be sharing the template for how I did it so that you don't have to go through all of that work. So be sure to check out the links in the description where you can download the template file where you can actually put the bottle openers into it for the engraving. For this project, I actually had a client bring me a bunch of leatherette bottle openers from JDS that they pre-purchased. So the part number for these was GFT558. That is one of the good starting points. So I started by downloading this file from the link listed up here. I will put this link in the description below in case you need a different product. Once I had the template, I went over to Illustrator and just opened that up. And this is what it looks like. This red inner line is the stitch pattern. The red outline is where the outline of the bottle opener is. And I will say that this is a good starting point, but it is not the actual dimension that you're going to need to have. So I'm gonna take this and copy it, and then take it over to my already completed design. So here I'm going to paste it into place and just put it over top of one of my other ones. When I zoom in here and I make my black line thicker, you'll see that the first part is pretty close. The part that was not accurate was the bottle opener section where it is metal. So what I did is actually took the outline that they provided and I offset that about 0.1 or 0.2 to get it to be about even with the rest of the outline. The reason I did this is because I need to actually make cutouts in a jig where the bottle openers will sit into it and if I didn't offset this path and make it bigger, I'd run into problems. If you're not familiar, the easiest way to offset a path is just click on the part you wanna offset. In this case, I had to split away a lot of the design, but if I went up to effect, down to path, and to offset path, if I preview this, you can see how it will take that whole shape and offset it correctly. Now, because I only needed the bottle opener section, I had to split all of this away to do this. Once I had my outline okay, I kept their template so that I can place my artwork. So in this case, I've already done this in my design, but if I show the logo layer, I wanna make sure that my logo, or the logo that I'm using, falls within the inner stitch line. So what I ended up doing for this was I actually took and ungrouped their design and you'll go in and group your logo that you're working with. And I ungrouped this and released the compound path until I could drag this one thing around by itself. Next, I took a copy of that and I pasted it in place and changed it to black. This way it was easy for me to see. The next step was to select that outline and my logo. And I went over here to the align and I just made sure that it was aligned vertically. And you'll see it jumped a little bit there. And the reason I copied this outline is I can drag it right back up to where it goes and make sure it lines up. If I didn't copy that outline to begin with, it would have been hard to tell where it went. You can also do the same when it comes to vertical alignment. So you can have them both selected, choose vertical, and then just make sure you drag it back into place where they line up. And now your artwork is centered inside of the engravable area. So now that I have all that set up, I'm just gonna delete their design or their template that they start with. And I actually went ahead and copy and pasted that down. So to copy and paste, I just select everything, copy it with Control C on the keyboard, hit Control Shift V to paste it in place where I copied it from. Then I hold down the shift key with the mouse to lock it in place and just drag it down. Now for the spacing, I had a board that was about 12 inches tall. 
So I just dragged down as many as I could fit without trying to overlap or get them too close. If you get them too close, there won't be enough material to hold it in as a jig. So just make sure you space them appropriately. As I said before, I'm going to link this exact file in the description below so that you have a good guide to work off of. All right, now that the design is done, I actually went ahead and already cut my template. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like and show you how the bottle openers go into it. And then we'll engrave a few and show you how they turn out. All right, so here is my template. You can see the cutouts for five of them in a column. You can add more to the right. I actually use this same board for multiple products. These cutouts are per the design that I showed you. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some bottle openers in these spots and then show you how to focus it. So here I'm just putting them into the spots. They should slide right in. So just make sure they're nice and flat and lay inside of those spots. And we'll go ahead and focus these. To focus these, I actually move it out over top of the bottle opener. So I'm just gonna move the machine over. I tend to focus it to either the left or the right. I don't really go in the center. These are the JDS ones. They have a magnet right here in the middle. And if you focus to that magnet, the engraving won't hit as well over on the sides. So I actually focus it to the sides to make sure that that's going to be engraved well. So I just hover over the side and then focus it with my manual gauge until it touches. And now I should be good to go. Before I start machining, let me show you what the settings are. So here you see the job manager. This is the design, but the resolution is 600 DPI. It's engraving from the bottom up. It's an engraving process with a speed of 80%, a power of 15% with a stucky dithering pattern. This part isn't as critical, but those are the settings. Keep in mind that these are the settings for the black. If you're using pink or gray where it starts to turn black instead of silver, this power may need to be about 25 or 30%. I've tried using the recommended settings on the JDS website and the Johnson Plastics website, and they're always a little bit off, especially the JDS one. These settings are for a 60 watt epilog laser. The settings definitely matter depending on who manufactured your machine. So it's gonna take a little bit of tweaking, but those are the settings that I use for my epilog. Now that everything is set up and it's focused, I'm going to go ahead and machine some and show you what that looks like. There are the finished bottle openers. You can see it's got the nice silver shine to it. If you go too deep, it's not going to be shiny. It's gonna be really dark. And if you don't engrave deep enough, it's just gonna stay black. So there is a very fine setting for these. During the machining, you may have seen the machine go all the way up and then back down and then all the way up again. So the reason for that is on this specific design, the Tipsy Robot and the Las Vegas part of the design need to be ran at 15% power. And the cocktail bar part, because it's a finer text and it was harder to get to show up, I actually had to run at 30% power. So that's the reason why it went all the way up and then back down and then all the way up again. If your design doesn't have those fine details like that one does, then the 15% power should work just fine. That's how I engrave the leather at bottle openers. Keep in mind that depending on which supplier you go with, they are a different shape. For example, this is one from Johnson Plastics. It is not magnetic. This one I bought maybe a year or two ago, so that it may have changed since then. But compared to the JDS one, it is much smaller and a different shape, and it doesn't have that magnet at all. 
but just be aware that they are different so they you can't use the same template for both however the same settings will work for both that's going to do it for this video if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel i try to come out with more laser videos and projects how to's things like that each week and be sure to check out my instagram at maker experiment where i share things ahead of time and different projects that i'm making along the way but i want to thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video